stealing away with the flag calls. Mark is a book of the New Covenant. It's a book of the apostles and sermons. It's a book of Christianity, promise and prophecies. It's a book of the gospel and Jehovah's servant, the history of Jesus Christ. Behold my servant, you'll find that in Isaiah 42 and 1. St. Mark was written by John Mark around 57 through 63 AD. The location and place are unknown. However, it is the 41st book of the Bible, 16 chapters, 678 verses, 15,178 words, etc., and so on. Here in the text, Jesus had some figuring to do had to calculate the crisis of crucifixion, he had to prepare himself for punishment, he had to take a deep breath before the levees in his lungs broke and he was no longer the beneficiary of breath. Can a brother get 50 feet? I gotta get some air. I need to go see a man about a dog. Here in the text, Jesus is in the neighborhood of needing to sort through some things. What I mean, he had to sort through some slander, some scrutiny, and some sabotage. He had to sort through punishment, pain, as well as persecution. He had to sort through alienation and isolation, then isolation and then alienation, agony and affliction, the cross of crucifixion, that's what he was dealing with. And he said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Terry, ye here, stay here. I got some things on my mind that only can be shared with and understood by God. That insight of supernatural kind. Stay here. I got a pause for the cause. I'm moaning in my spirit. I'm lingering in my lament. I'm paralyzed and polarized. As we consider the life and living of Christ, public enemy number one. Hang them high and stretch them wide. When we consider the life and living of Christ and place his pilgrimage in perspective, purpose versus politics, he chose and encouraged us all to die on our feet as opposed to live on our knees when we consider the life and living of Christ and study both his soul as well as his stroll, his stroll through the corridors of a crooked community, communities with no consciousness, worshiping with mouths, honoring with lips, but yet having hearts far from God. When we consider the living and life of Christ, we delve into the following scene and scenarios, these infallible truths. We find ourselves understanding and underscoring the sufferings of Christ. Here in the text, we see Jesus in his humanity at a point of witness, at a point of weakness in his witness. Stay here, he said. You see, I'm just traveling, trying to make heaven my home. When yeah. we consider the life and living of Christ, this hound that people were trying to hunt, Herod says, me want him dead. The life and living of Christ, mocked and misunderstood Messiah, royalty in rags, depressed and disappointed in mankind, mankind. When we consider the life and living of Christ, shackled by a heavy burden, ambassador in chains, trying to communicate with a stubborn and stiff-necked people, spiritually and dyslexically afflicted, not physically, but mentally. As we consider the life and living of Christ, the lepers, the lost, and the lame, the malnourished and maladjusted, considering the life and living of Christ and their contingent commitments with him. Jesus, I love you because. I love you because you bless. I love you because you heal. I love you because you deliver and provide for. I love you because you protect. Because, because, because. When we consider the life and living of Christ in the narratives and paraphrasing Tina Turner and Je Janet Jackson, God's response in my mind's eye to this holograph of hypocrisy would probably be the following. What? have you done for me lately? Who have you fed? Who have you clothed? Who have you encouraged? Who have you embraced? And who have you empowered? When? Who have you advocated for? Who have you stood in the gap for? What stranger have you called friend? When you consider the life and living of Christ, Tina says, what's love got to do with it? Again, who have you fed? Who have you clothed? Who have you taken in? And who have you loved concerning the least of God's Little ones, hammer time here in the text. Hammer time. Here in the text. When you look at the biblical and biographical biography of Christ, 
When we see how it is examined, when the text is raised, when the word is rightly divided, and when commentaries are cross-referenced, when we consider the life and living of Christ, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. Footnote. Having a mother, Jesus did. Having a mother that he could not show favoritism to. All right. All right. Jesus, being a king, was placed pluralistically in a society with common everyday people. Jesus had a brother named James that he couldn't really hang out with or show special affection to. When you consider the life and living of Christ, Jesus was lonely. And he asked the question, can this cup pass from me? You could be in a crowd of a thousand people and be all by yourself. Can this cup pass from me? Nevertheless, not my will but thine be done. Have your way, O Lord. Considering the life of Christ, to whom much was given, much was required. I want to see that blessed Savior, the one who died for me, right? He sacrificed his life, gave me liberty. Considering the life of Christ, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Text time. In our considering, we see an exhausted Emmanuel and El Shaddai. Come on, come on. Come Hang him high, stretch him wide. Yeah. Death was just around the corner. Uh -huh. Death was just around the corner due to a junction generated by a money junkie named Judas. Come on. Jesus was tired. He was tired of the trenches and needed simply to talk with God. Uh -huh. Mono y mono. Jesus just you and I, Daddy, I've been busy feeding 5,000. I've been busy loving lepers. I've been busy deputizing disciples. I've been busy reaching for the recluse. I've been busy walking with the weary. I've been busy tearing with the torn. Can this cup pass from me? Here in the text, Jesus was struggling with the struggle and needed to talk to God, and so it is with us. Just like Jesus, after we've given our best, after we have lost what we have loved, and after Frankie Beverly calls it the morning after, we need to talk with God. Looking at the life of Christ, we see service ain't nothing nice. It's a profession of scars. In my mind's eye and sanctified imagination, I'd imagine that Jesus sought counsel with God. I'd imagine that Jesus sought clarity and absoluteness with God. I'd imagine Jesus sought both direction and directives Come on. from God. I'd imagine he sought shelter in a storm. I'd imagine he looked for a bridge over troubled waters. In my mind's eye, I see Jesus tired, torn, angry and in anguish, spiritual arthritis, cramped and confused. Uh, how do you sing the Lord's song in the strange land, these rivers of Babylon? It is again in my mind's eye that I see Jesus found himself at a fork in the road. Frustration versus future. Come on. Stay here. That's what he said to the disciples. I'll be back. I've got to do this for myself. Quiet. It's calling me. Quiet is calling me to a place where I can reconcile and reflect on the wreckage inside of myself. Quiet is calling me to remember that naked I came to thee and naked I shall return. Quiet is calling me to remember that the prayers are still yet pending and the prayers of the righteous will avail much. Quiet is calling me to remember that God's create, God creates rivers in the desert and still yet prepares tables for me in the presence of my enemies. When quiet is calling, sometimes Times you just got to steal away. Well, You've got to steal away and go back to that old landmark. Yeah. That landmark where hope preceded hopelessness and we held on and held out. That old landmark where faith was not fleeting. It was firm and it was fortified. That old landmark, a time when character was concrete and consistent. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. Sometimes you've got to steal away when quiet is calling for in our quiet time we are in fellowship and communion with God. We are not distracted by planes, trains, and automobiles. When quiet is calling, we are not distracted by gossip and hearsay and who's doing who. When quiet 
is calling. We are not distracted by layoffs and stayoffs and mountain mortgages and deals that are now forming barriers and wow. tune-ups and flat tires and things of such. When quiet is calling, we are not distracted by the dramas of baby mama, the dramas of baby daddy, test tube babies or baby kids. When quiet is calling in communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit, though we may 